Um, so on to cats. This is going to go a bit more quickly because a lot of the body language is the same. Actually, not all of it, but a lot of the same. How many of you have cats at home? Just a couple. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, those of you who have cats know the big difference. <laughs> it's the tail. Um, neutral position for a cat is just hanging down. So like that bloodhound. So that, that's pretty normal. Um, in the cage, the tail may be wrapped around its body. It should not be clinging, pressed up against the body. It should just be kind of swooped around. That's normal. Um, tail straight up is actually a really good thing in cats. Not that it's a bad thing in dogs, but it's a friendly gesture in cats. If that tail comes up as you approach, that's a nice thing. Tail straight up and vibrating, the cat adores you if it's doing that as you approach. Um, just make sure there's no pee spraying up. <laughs> that's not marking, it loves you if, if there's no pee there. Um, tail straight up and bristle then is the one time you have to be concerned. That's more like a big pipe cleaner sticking up. That's defensiveness. But otherwise, if the tail is up, you're good. Um, tail wagging, again, is the big, big difference. That's arousal, bless you, which it can be with dogs, but also agitation, generally. Um, it could be the tip of the tail just starts flicking. It might be this big, broad, again, sweeping wag, which is so lovely on dogs, <laughs> not so great on cats. Um, some cats, that's all they'll do. They'll just basically complain. And they'll just go on and on, I don't like this, why aren't you stopping? Oh my gosh, I don't like this. Um, other cats, they do this, and like, oh, you didn't stop. Um, so you don't know what kind of cat you have until you deal with it. There's no predictor that tells you which, what kind of tolerance level they have until you get in that situation. So really the best thing to do as soon as that tail starts going, just stop. Put it down, stop handling it, whatever, until it calms down, and then go back to it again. Um, we have very, very few cats in who've had their tails docked in any kind of way. There are a couple of breeds that have no tail or very shortened tails. They're pretty rare, um, so you're not going to see them often. We've had them a couple times, but not too often. Um, we sometimes get cats who've had partial amputations due to injury or obsessive compulsive behaviors, but usually there's enough tail there that you would still be able to tell what was going on with it. Okay, so you don't have that kind of disadvantage like you do with dogs with cats. Um, so just a little video to show you mostly the, the friendly rising of the tail. Um, now these cats do have a little bit of wagging going on, but because of the rest of the body language, I did not feel too concerned about it when I was taping this. So you can see as she approached a little bit, the tail went up. So she's got, she's the one who's wagging more than the one in the back. And then the one who's on the right is going to approach soon and you'll be able to see that kind of, it's funny how they kind of like almost ratchet up. The tail doesn't just rise all at once, it kind of goes in degrees. So there we go. That's ideally what you'll see as a cat approaches you. And hers have gone up too. And you see the cat on the tail. Cat on the right goes down again as I back off a little bit. And then hers too. Now I do have to say, after watching this, I don't know how many times I watched this, and I finally realized recently watching it that sh the one on the left kind of does more often than I had realized hold her tail to the side, especially kind of drapes it over her sister's back. These are about six month old kittens. Um, she could be in heat. And I didn't realize that before. Um, so watch for that. It, I'll make the inappropriate joke I made before. If a cat is holding its tail to the side like that, it's a, a non-spade, so intact female is holding her tail. That's a, an invitation. Okay. Do not accept it. Okay, that's my inappropriate joke. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, she well, I'm sure she knows that that's her sister. She wasn't inviting anything and you know, propositioning her sister. It's just a normal thing for the tail to go that way when they're in heat. Um, the mouth, you're not gonna get a whole lot of body language actually from cats about the mouth. Um, normal for them is closed. Um, they don't pant generally when they're stressed. If you see a cat panting, it's probably in heat stroke. So get one of the vets right away because they don't, don't use their body so much to, or their mouth so much for body language. Um, also on here, it's not body language, but I bring it up because people are often confused by it, is when cats kind of grimace at you. Um, they smell something that's very interesting there's something called a Jacobson's organ on the roof of the mouth. So when there's a really intense smell that they're concerned or they're interested in, then they suck in, so they have to open their mouth, they curl up their nose and suck that scent up to the roof of the mouth so they can figure out what it is there. Um, so people frequently associate it with dog bearing teeth, but it's not. And again, you can put it in context. If they've just had their nose down on the ground on something and they look up at you, you know that they're sniffing something. Okay, and that's all that that's about. Okay. Ears very much like dogs. Neutral is straight up. When the ears are turning, they're interested to something. They're alerted to a sound. Um, ears forward is offensive. Ears back is defensive. Again, with cats, pretty much 
erect ears is what you're going to see. Again, there are a couple of breeds where that is not the, the norm. The ears kind of curl over or back. Again, extremely rare, and we've, in my 15 years, maybe three of them have been in, three or four, Scottish Fold or American Curl. I'm just not going to see those here. Um, but there's still enough probably at the base that you'd be able to tell if the ears were turning or not. Um, as far as the ears going back, it's not like dogs who get defensive by making themselves look small so that you'll then back off. It's defensive in that they're ready to attack you. They don't want those ears to be shredded when they bite. Okay, so that's completely about maintaining their 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 health, sort of. Okay. Um, whiskers. Cats use their whiskers a lot more than dogs do. Um, again, forward is arousal or interest. So again, put in context. If you just put a toy in there, and they come up looking at you, and their ears are or whiskers are forward, they're sniffing it. They're kind of feeling it with their whiskers too to see what it is. Whiskers go back against their cheeks, again, defensiveness, so the whiskers don't get plucked out when they fight. And we've got video here to show you what it looks like when a cat's whiskers go forward. Um, they don't just go forward, though. Actually, they kind of spread. They kind of fan out, so they'll point down a little bit and point up a bit, too. Now, this guy kind of starts with his whiskers forward a bit because I was playing with him when I saw this happening, and I got the, the toy out then to, to finish. So they're already forward a bit, but they will go forward more here. Notice I am also going to touch his shoulder, see how the whiskers go back on that side? Like, oh, what's over there? And then I go back forward again when I move my hand away. And again, see how they're kind of spread out there, they're really pointing down. So they are almost 90 degrees out from his face now. eyes. Um, again, you're going to be able to see the iris and the pupil evenly, generally, when a cat is comfortable. The more the pupils are dilated, the more stressed or aroused they are, just like with dogs. You're not going to see whale eye like you do with dogs. And the pupils constrict for offensive aggression. And that's true with dogs as well, but you just seem to see it more in cats than in dogs. Um, again, look at the context. If you're in a room where their, their cage is right in front of a window and it's a bright sunny day, they're going to have constricted pupils anyway because of all the light coming in. Okay? But if that's not the case, um, and the pupils only constrict when you approach or reach in to pet them, then you know it's an aggressive uh, stance or an aggressive signal, I should say. Um, eye contact is not nearly as important to cats as it is to dogs. They will stare at you, and it means nothing other than they're looking at you. Okay? Um, hopefully, though, what you will see is a really slow blink. That's a cat who's really content and relaxed, um, and it's a sign that, that he's friendly and wants to, uh, to interact with you. Um, this is, again, like yawning with dogs. This is something you can try to do to a cat who is agitated. You can try doing nice slow blinks and see if that calms them down. Um, and just a, a fun fact, at least for me it was. Anyway, I did this with a snow leopard at the zoo. Really cool, so all cats do this. Okay, so you can kind of get into a little back and forth going on if you're a behavior nerd like I am. <laughs> I think it's really cool to interact and see all these things with cats. Um, and then a stressed cat again won't make eye contact. This is pretty apparent usually. They are underneath the newspapers in the back of the cage behind the litter pan. That type of thing. They, they don't hide the fact that they don't want to be messed with when you're